Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning. I give you the glory. I give you the honor, the praise, and adoration. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are glorious. There is none like you. There is none above you. You are our Alpha. You are our Omega. You are our beginning and the end. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in these times, Father, you have not changed. You are still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, mighty God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, for releasing the mysteries of Christ in this time. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. You may be seated. You know, today I just want to share with you. In fact, we are starting a series. This series is about Christ's righteousness. I don't know how long it's going to take. All that I'm asking you to do is to focus, take notes, and please don't allow your mind to distract you. Hallelujah. The biggest distraction is not the, your neighbor, it's your mind. Christ's righteousness, my righteousness. You know, growing up, growing up, uh, the way I was so naughty, even though I didn't do anything wrong, when they start complaining that something went wrong, the first person who will feel guilty will be me. Because I got so associated with the wrongs that are done in my environment. In such a way that I was always guilty whether I did it or not. I'll just feel guilty. Whether I was there when it happened or not, I'll just be guilty. In such a way that I will even apologize in advance. Until someone says, but you were not there. You, it is not you who did it. Say, oh really, it's not me. This time it's not me. Then, then I'm fine. So we, we have a church that is living. Hey, Pastor T. Uh, we, 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 we have a church that is living a life of guilt and condemnation despite what Jesus Christ has done. We have, we have a church that believes that Satan has more rights in their lives than, than the finished works of Calvary. And that is happening because we are focusing so much on our works what we say, what we do, or what we don't do, than what Jesus Christ did. You know, there are some people when they are sick, the first thing that they think of is what, what is it that I did that qualifies me to be sick. And that person is born again. 
There are people that even when they lose, the first thing that they think of, what is it that I have done to lose what I have lost? And those people are born again. Jesus Christ has born them, has bought them with his blood. And they, we still have that inward looking mentality. What have I done? People have forgotten about the cross. How many of you can relate with what I'm saying? That this self-blame, like self-condemnation is always, you know, lingering around us. I'm lacking because I'm poor because I'm talking about children of God. Everything is centered around our deeds. You know, if we go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, it says that, and that from childhood, we have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Check this. From childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through Scriptures. Meaning, there is wisdom for salvation. You need to know how to act out your salvation. You need to know how to manifest your salvation. Amen. Are, are, are we together? Know how to live the life of salvation. The Bible says, from childhood, check here. Paul is talking to Timothy, whom he have trained for childhood, that there are certain things, there are certain things that can happen. They are not coming to make you backslide. Because Satan knows that some of you he cannot make you backslide. He cannot make you go drink. He cannot make you go do all those funny things. The only opportunity that is has now is to deceive you into not understanding the fullness of your salvation. And when you are deceived, you act as the one who is not saved. Let us, let us read the scripture. It's a series. We're not going to rush it. Talking about Christ's righteousness. And when you are done, oh, I'm telling you, you will enjoy your salvation. Second, second, second Timothy 3, 15. I want us to go there, but let, let, us, let us give it context. I'm going to start from from 13. But evil men will, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing, knowing, knowing from whom you have learned from. 
and that from your childhood you have known the holy scriptures which were able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now we are adding. The holy scriptures are able to make you what? Wise. For what? For salvation. Through what? Through, through faith. In who? In Christ Jesus. So we see three things happening here. One, the word of God. Remember when you started I said, you must, thirst, you must be thirsty for the word of God. The, the Holy, which is the, which is the Holy Scripture, which is the Word of God, is able to make you what? Wise. Which wisdom are we talking about? What is wisdom? We cannot just talk about the Word and not, and not know what is the Word. Wisdom is the ability to apply what you know. Amen? So what comes before wisdom? Knowledge. So what is it that you have to know? In other words, you need to have what? Logos before what? Rema. You need to have what? Logos before what? Rema. You need to have the word before what? Revelation. Am I, am I talking to someone? Because you, without you having the knowledge of the word, you won't have the ability to apply the wisdom of God through the word. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. And also he's saying, let us read again. When you have known the Holy Spirit, which is able to make you wise. For what? For salvation. But now let us describe what is salvation. What is salvation? Is being saved from. In other words, you ask, okay, can we, can, can we go straight to the definition of salvation? Because I, I don't want to rush, I don't want to rush this. I want you to understand that saved people are being shortchanged. Salvation, saved, saved people are, are being shortchanged. Not that Jesus doesn't love them because of lack of knowledge. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to give you a definition of salvation. Can we go to the proper definition of salvation? We praise. We praise your name. We praise, we praise your name. We praise, we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise. We praise your name. Salvation meaning is taking too slow. I'll continue. I'll, I'll go to it. I'll go to it later. Let us go to the next word. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Is there someone who read who the meaning of salvation? Where's the meaning of salvation? I don't, I don't want to rush this until I make sure that you understand. Anybody with the meaning of salvation? Is sozo in Greek? There you go. Sozo is the Greek word for salvation. It, it goes beyond the forgiveness of sins. Check here. Being physically healed of diseases to be delivered from your enemy. Meaning, there is completely, there's what? Salvation that you are completely saved 
or you are completely delivered from sickness, from poverty, from demonic oppression. Salvation in its form that nothing that the Satan has ever done to you exists anymore when you are saved. Uh, because I, I want us to understand that nothing that Satan has ever done against you since you were saved what exists again to torment you. Meaning you are completely what? Free. So that's the reason, Timo, that's the reason why Paul is saying that Timothy must be wise to do what? To what? To salvation. Meaning there are certain things that because of the deception of Satan Satan might, might, might want to make you believe that he still have certain rights in your life. Are we together? Say, I'm completely saved. Say like you mean, say, I'm completely saved. Say, my salvation is complete in Christ Jesus. Say like you mean, say, my salvation is complete in Christ Jesus. So, what is the meaning of a complete salvation? One, saved from your self, self lies, self deception. You are saved. Saved from the kingdom of darkness. Saved from your generational iniquities. No, I want us to understand that. Say from what? Generational what? Iniquities. Generational iniquities are the ones that attract generational curses. Are we together, church? I know it sounds like a Bible class, but I want it to be this way today. When you are saved, you are saved from what? Generational what? Iniquities. We, we, we will see that. So, if you are saved from generational iniquities, there's no generational, there's no more generational what? Curses. So, you are no longer a continuation of your what? Of your father's house. You are the continuation of whose house? Jesus' house. I always pray for my children this prayer that they are not the, their bloodline is the bloodline of who? Of Jesus Christ. So, there is, so that is the wisdom in salvation. Who are you? Because many are operating in the spirit of what? Sin and death and yet they are saved. You know, especially in this time and era of COVID, you know, the biggest fear now for many people is a call from home. Who is sick? Who is not sick? Who is healed and who is not healed. Whereas your joy should be that if they call me with any issue, I'm the solution. Hallelujah. Because of who? Who you are in Christ. Now, let us continue. Verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? In righteousness. So meaning, there are certain things that we won't understand about our righteousness in Christ until we are properly instructed by the word. What is righteousness? Can we define righteousness? Righteousness is having a right, I'm giving you a simple definition, to stand before God guilt-free, sinless, condemnation-free, as if it is Jesus himself standing before God. That is your righteousness. Do you understand? Uh, 
Ok. Righteousness. I'm gonna dip, I want you to. I want you to, to write it down. Is the ability to stand in the presence of the Father without the sense of guilt, condemnation, or inferiority, as if sin has never existed. That is righteousness. It's your ability to stand in the presence of the Father without sense of guilt, condemnation, no inferiority, as if sin has never existed. But pastor, how, how could you say that? I mean, I'm human. I'm not perfect. That's why Jesus died for you. That's why now we are depending on the perfect, on the perfection of Jesus Christ, not of ourselves. Are we together? Hallelujah. So I, I, I want us, I want us to, to get out of this self-righteousness because it's, it, it has opened the doors for us to agree with the works of Satan in our lives. We believe that because we did not do this, therefore, Satan has the right to do this. No. No. A big no. A, a thousand times. It, as long as you are born again, Satan has lost every right in your life. Because Jesus has died for your past sins, present sins, and your future sins. Pastor, are you encouraging us to sin? No, no, I'm not saying that. You will understand when we go forward. Let us go to Romans 10. Romans 10. I think this introduction is too long of righteousness, but we'll, we might just learn to live with it. It's exciting. Romans 10. Is that, is that, uh, okay, to give it context, context, let us start from six. But the righteousness of faith speak in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does he say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which, is, which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that you are raised from the dead, you will be saved. Check here. All of us who are saved here have confessed with our mouth the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now, why did the Bible put the Lord? Why did it say if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is raised from the dead? It will still be correct. The statement will still be correct. It will however lose the meaning of the Lordship of Jesus Christ of our lives. Hallelujah. So, check here. Your righteousness. I'm going to talk about your righteousness. The moment... The moment you accept the, you, the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is the day that you lost the Lordship of your life, over your life. Satan has lost, check your number one, which is principle. This principle you must understand. You must never forget this as long as you live. The day that you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Satan has lost the lordship of, of over your life. In other words, he is no longer your master. Amen. He has lost every right over your life. Jesus Christ has become the Lord and what? And 
same Savior. So, so, so Jesus Christ come in two ways. He is the Lord, Master. I shall please make sure there is order. He is the Lord and what? And Master. And again, you know what? Salvation. Check here now. Salvation. Let us look back. Let us go back to salvation. I want you to understand this. What are you saved from? Sickness. Poverty. Okay. Sickness, poverty, and what? Diseases. So you are completely what? Made whole. Spirit. Oh, I know that you are saying, but pastor, we know this. You don't know. You are completely made whole. What? Spirit, soul, and what? And body. That's, that's where Paul come in. When he say, Timothy must be wise concerning his salvation. Because Satan wants to claim other parts in your life as if they are not part of salvation. Are we together? Hallelujah. Like you are saved, but you must still be poor. You know, to be poor is, is some form of holiness. You know? you know, when you are poor, you are holy. You are humble, you know. You are humble, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you know, those who are... And then, you must still be sick. When you are sick, God is humbling you. You know, those are lies. You must not have peace. So, we must know that as we receive the wisdom of salvation, it comes also in us understanding the force of righteousness in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, let us read 10, 9 to 13. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto what? Righteousness. And the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. That's what many people don't know. You become righteous before you are saved. Uh, Pastor, you are becoming controversial. Can you can, can look at the scripture? Okay. Can you go to Romans now? Romans 10, 9 to 13. I'm going to start again from 9. Okay. Let me start from 10. He say, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. The moment your heart believes, check here. The moment, what does your heart symbolize? The spirit man. The moment your inner man says, I believe. You have started partaking into the righteousness of Christ. However, it's not complete. When you open your mouth and say, I believe. Confession is made unto what? Salvation. Meaning, what you believe and what you say gives you the ability to apply and live into your salvation. So, to many, salvation is just head knowledge. There are no, there is no sequence of doing things in salvation. No, that's a lie. That's a lie of the devil. Say, I'm saved. Say, I'm completely saved. Say, with my heart, I believe unto righteousness. And with my mouth, I confess unto salvation. We, we, are, we, are, we are getting somewhere. I think today we will go a little bit further. Eleven. 
For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. I want to, I'm going to ask you this question. How many times have you been shameful in your life? Being, being, being born again as you are. Ask yourself that God, how can I go through this? I mean, I'm your, I'm your daughter. How can the world enjoy life like this and me become shameful? Can I tell you what, what, what you were doing in that state? It is self-pity. It is not shame. You, you, you forgot who you are in Christ. The moment you start feeling that way, even though a situation arrives, arises that causes you to be shameful, you don't become shameful. What do we do? We proclaim and declare that Jesus has suffered shame for me. I am the righteousness of Christ. Shame is not my portion, but, but we'll go about that one. Can we rush quickly? Romans 5. I'm just laying the foundation for righteousness. Romans 5, 17 to 18 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign through the one Christ Jesus. Therefore, as through, no, as through one man's offense judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation, even so one man's righteous act, the free gift come to all men, resulting into justification. Hallelujah. Can we read this slowly? For by one man offense, death reign through the one. Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Christ Jesus. Understand this sentence now. Through one man's offense. Whose offense? Adam's offense. Death reigned. Through one more death, what? Reign through the one. Much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one who? Christ Jesus. Listen, child of God. We are no longer under the law of sin and death. Listen to me. Adam, because of disobedience, the moment he fell from grace, he started operating under the law of what? Of sin and what? And death. That's why death reigned. But the moment we received the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we, be, we received what? The gift of righteousness. What is that gift? The gift of the ability to stand before God as if we have never sinned. As if sin has never reigned. I want to put it to you. Sickness Death, poverty, lack, all those things, they operate under the laws of sin and death. Are we together? Hallelujah. Say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say my faith in Christ has made me righteous before God. Are we together? Is it too fast or too deep? There are... Let me answer one question that, that are being asked, that some of you are asking. Pastor, are you saying I'm not supposed to be holy no, holiness is a conduct. Do not confuse the two. Holiness is what? It's a conduct. It's how 
the moment you understand your righteousness, you will be able to conduct yourself in a holy manner. Amen? So, your, your holy living cannot earn you righteousness. Righteousness has been earned already by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. How? Let us go to the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. You, 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 you need to understand this. He say, say, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Who knew no sin? Jesus Christ. Are we together? Church, are we together? Now, yo. I want you to say, Father, say, Heavenly Father, reveal this to me. Let me have the understanding of this, of the word that you are releasing unto my spirit man now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let us go to the word again. For I'm going to start with 2 Corinthians 5.21, the first part. Say, for he made him to be seen for us. That is where your righteousness comes in. Jesus Christ was born of a woman. He took the sinful flesh. Though he did not commit any sin, yet he was made sin. What is to be made sin? What is to be made sin? God said to Jesus, you see, man has sinned. And the punishment of sin is death. However, I'm tired of the blood of goats and animals. One of us has to be a sacrifice. And Jesus who is God, said to God, the Father, I will go down, prepare a body for me. As God prepared the body for Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was born of a woman. Genesis 3 is confirmed, the seed of a woman. The woman doesn't have a seed. Biology doesn't allow us to say that. However, the seed of a woman is brought unto, unto earth. He appeared in the likeness of sinful flesh. As Jesus came into this world, he was accused of sin and yet he did not commit sin. The sins that he was accused of was of breaking the laws of sin and death. One of the, one of the accusations was why did you heal the man with leprosy on, on Sabbath? He was breaking the law of Sabbath, which was the laws of sin and death. But as Jesus came, there is something that happened on the cross. When he was on the cross, God imputed all the sins of mankind, the past, the present, and the future sins unto Jesus when he was on the cross. Are we together? When that's how he was made sin, not sins. That sin that God hated, Jesus became a mass of sin. He took all the sins. And he said, God, all the punishment that was supposed to be imputed to mankind has now been placed unto my body. I am now their sin. 
Now when you look at human beings, look at them through me. My right standing with you, God, is now their right standing. Because their sins has been placed on me for eternity. As long as they can open their mouth and confess that Jesus, is, that I am their Lord and Savior, the moment they do that, all their sins are gone at where they are in Jesus and righteousness become their portion. So that's who Jesus Christ was talking about you. So immediately after Jesus was made sin, we were justified to stand before God. I, w- I want to put it to you, child of God. Listen to me. Never allow any form of self-condemnation to stand between you and God. Never allow any voice of Satan to tell you otherwise that you are not worthy. It is a lie. What Jesus has done, he has died for our sins once and for all and we are righteous before him now and forevermore. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Say I am the righteousness of God. How so? When God looks at Jesus Christ, I remember when Jesus Christ was being baptized, a dove came down and landed on him and God said, this is my son, in whom what? I'm well pleased. The same applies to you. When Jesus, when, when God looks at you, he said, that is Mr. Tusi, in whom I'm well pleased. But God, I've just done this yesterday. Did you pray? Did you confess your sins? Yes, I've confessed. You are forgiven. You are still righteous. Hallelujah. Do not allow Satan to steal from you by condemning you. What matters most is that you don't go back. That's why Jesus Christ, after he healed them, what did he say? Go and do what? And sin no more. He said what? Go and do what? And sin no more. Hallelujah. So in closing, we need to discard or to get rid, write it down, of sin consciousness. Get rid of your weakness consciousness and partake in the strength of Jesus Christ. Amen? You get rid of what? Of your sin consciousness. Many of us are aware of what we could not do, what we could not be, what we could not have, than what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Am I talking to someone? You need to make it your responsibility to awake to righteousness. How do I become awake of righteousness? Paul said to Timothy, be wise to your salvation. In other words, know your scriptures. Know where you stand in God. The more, the more you study your Bible, the more you read your Bible, you are awakening your awareness to the righteousness that you have by faith in Christ Jesus, not your works. Romans 
Righteousness consciousness is your victory consciousness in Christ. I want to put it to you. Wake up one day. I don't know how you're going to do it. I, I, just want to, I just want to try to explain to you righteousness in layman's terms. Wake up one day and say, I have a clean slate in my life. I've never sinned. I've never done anything wrong. I've never opened any door to Satan. I have a clean slate. I'm so pure. I'm so pure even milk can be jealous when it looks at me. When you wake up and feel that way, you have started partaking the righteousness of Christ. That's who you are in Christ. Am I, am I talking to someone? That's who you are what? In Christ. When you have that consciousness, when Satan come, try to steal from you, he uses nothing but what you are aware of. Hallelujah. Can I repeat it? The power of Satan is in your awareness of sin. In other words, your sin consciousness empowers him over you. But the moment you start having righteousness consciousness, you, you overpower Satan in Christ. How so? We will go to it. Many of us believe that we can never be anything else in our lives because of our awareness of what our parents have done. Because of our awareness of the past mistakes of our families. No. That is the awareness that opens doors to Satan. Be aware of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Hallelujah. When Satan reminds you of the iniquities of your father's house, remind him of the victory on the cross of your father who art in heaven. Am, am I talking to someone? When Satan reminds you, I'm going to repeat it. When your, Satan reminds you of any weakness in your father's house, remind him of the strength of your father's cross. That is living in righteousness. Proverbs 10, 6. Let us go there. We praise we praise you, Lord. He said, check this. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. <laughs> the mom, blessings are where? On the head of what? Of the righteous. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Listen to me. Who are the righteous? Those who have faith in who? In Christ. And the finished works of Calvary. The Bible says what? Blessings are in your head. Don't be curse conscious. Be blessing conscious. Am I talking to someone? Proverbs 12, 21. It talks to the current situation. You need to declare this when you go. No, no, no. I, I, I made this. It's okay. No grave trouble will overtake what? The righteous. In other ways, say, no harm, no evil will happen to the righteous. Why am I telling you this? 
in other words, what you are conscious of happens. Job was forever conscious of sin. He said, one thing that I think that I fear the most has finally happened to me. Who are you? Are you someone who is on the mercy of Satan? Who is barely making it every day? So yo, today I survived. I arrived home. Yo, I nearly died. Why, 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 why do you nearly die? You see, there was a lot of cars on the road. Anything could have happened. An accident could have happened. There was a lot of cars on the road. An accident could have happened. I could have died. But you know, no, 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 no. You, you, we, we are not conscious of death. We are conscious of life in Christ Jesus. Why? Because we, we have the right standing with God and in God. We are not living this life aware of death. Our consciousness by our right standing in Christ Jesus has been raised and connected to life and life in abundance in Christ Jesus. Am I talking to someone? You know, they are retrenching. I don't know whether I'm next or not. No. The one the right standing with God will just say, you know what, I'm, they are retrenching. I must start praying for the, righteous, for the righteous of God not to lose their jobs. Proverbs 11.21 Proverbs 11.21 Say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. Say I am blessed. Say I have the right standing with God. I can approach his throne groom with boldness knowing that he loves me the same way he loves Jesus Christ. That's who you are. Right? You say righteousness is the ability to receive the love of God the same way he loves Jesus Christ. In other words, the way God loves Jesus Christ, that's the way God loves me. I have that right standing. Wow. I, 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 wish, I wish you can understand this. Proverbs 11, 21 says, Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished. But the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. Okay, in simple English, but the children of what? Of the righteous will be delivered. So as the righteous, we fear no harm. Our children, he said, okay, be assured that an evil person will go unpunished. But the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. I'm, I, I, I'm, I just want to make you righteous, to be righteousness conscious. As you are the righteous of the Lord, as you look at your children, you must see their destiny secured in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I always say this. Whenever we marry our spiritual daughters in the church, we know that they are things that belongs to them because of what God has promised to us as the spiritual parents. They will never be barren. They will have houses. They will have cars. And I'm telling you, because of our righteousness in Christ Jesus, all our spiritual children that you have married here, none of them doesn't have a house. They all have houses. They all have children. They are all blessed with cars. These are the blessings that we've declared and we see them manufacturing. Why? It's not because of my righteousness. No. It's what they deserve. That's what Jesus Christ died for. 
Hallelujah. So I would like you to stand up. I would like you to, to pray for the grace of righteousness, consciousness. Because it is the grace. You, you need that grace. As you receive that grace, sin and death consciousness will leave you and your family. You will begin to see who you really are in Christ. Some of you, your eyes will be opened. That victim mentality will die. You will begin to see yourself as a strong one in Christ. Why? Right. Come on. Tatla, come. Tatla, come. I want to use something that can give us social distancing. Can you, can you give us that light? The other light that we are not using. Come, come put it here. Stretch it up. Let, let's make it fast. Put it here. It's okay. It's okay. That I come stand here. Yeah. Stand back first. You see, I, I, I want to see you. I want to show you two types of people. The one who is sin conscious and the one who is righteousness conscious when they pray. The one who is sin conscious go stand, go stand there by the corner. Yeah, just lift up your hands as if you are praying. Here is God and the glory just the one who is in conscious, he knows that when he prays, he is in God. He, he, he is supposed to be in God, but because of the consciousness of sin, they move away from God. They move away from God. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. He is still saying the name of Jesus, but he doesn't believe that the prayers that he's praying shall come to pass because of guilt, shame, and condemnation. But the one, come on, Lantla, but the one who, who understands his right standing with God, hold the light. He comes boldly. He's with God. He's praying right with God. He knows that God is here listening to his prayers. So it it. From prayer, it becomes a conversation between a father and a son. Hallelujah. So, it becomes a conversation between Jesus and God. Even though it's non tantra but it's no longer non tantra that is, that is praying. It's Jesus because Jesus has become his righteousness. So, the, so as he prays, he gets closer to God. Come, come. He, he gets closer to God. Come, come. He could... Hold this to you closer. Until they become one. Such that Satan does not know whose voice is it. Is it in Tlatla's voice or God's voice? Am I talking to someone? Why? Because uh, there's no more what? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set them free from the law of sin and death. So what do they do? Go. What do they do? They hold on to the master. And the, so the voice become one. The, it, it is no longer my voice. It has become God's voice. In the kingdom of darkness, it is what? Confusion. It is no longer an answered prayer. It's an instructive prayer. That is instructing the kingdom of darkness to move or things are coming. That's the reason why God said you shall declare a thing. 
and it shall be what? Established. Hallelujah. So those who are righteous in God, they don't say, I'm waiting for an answer. No. No, 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 no. No. Daniel waited for an answer. Jesus Christ was not yet crucified. He was not born again. We are the answer. You didn't get it. You, you, you are the answer. Because you, in him you live. In him you move. In him he has, you have your being. Hallelujah. Do you understand? So we're going to stop here with today's righteousness. We'll continue next week. Amen. But that will give you a new perspective about your Christianity. So now we'll go back to our opening scripture. 2 Timothy 3.15 that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You need to be wise for salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you for, for the gift of righteousness. We thank you, mighty God, that Father, we don't have the right standing with you through our works, but Father, through the finished works of Calvary. Heavenly Father, I pray, mighty God, that Father, the spirit of sin consciousness, self-condemnation, guilt and shame, Heavenly Father, depart from us. It is no longer our portion. For Father, we have the boldness to come and stand before you. We thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen.